After installing our 2500 watt solar system up here on the roof of our RV, the number one question we kept getting over and over again was, how's it performing? All right, so now we're gonna get down to the nitty gritty. What everybody's been wanting to find out is how much power are you actually getting from this 2500 watt solar array? Hey guys, welcome to the Salty Trip channel. I am Chris and we're all about full-time RV life, trucks, travel, towing, solar power, you know, everything that has to do with that kind of off-grid living and stuff like that. So we are going to talk about our solar system today. If you've been following along, we installed a 2500 watt uh, solar system array on the roof of our fifth wheel RV. We're gonna start from the beginning to catch everybody up on exactly what we have going on here. This is a Keystone Cougar 315 RLS. Uh, it's a 2020, it's just a couple years old. We bought it used and it has a residential fridge in it. So we started off with just one inverter. We installed one inverter, uh, Victron 24 volt, 3000 VA, two by 120 in the front bay. And we had paired it with a lead time, 24 volt, 200 amp hour battery. And that just kind of got us by at first. And then of course we, you know, it's, it's kind of addictive and it keeps growing. So that system kept growing. And eventually we wound up with three of those 24 volt, 200 amp hour batteries for a whopping 15,000 watt hours of battery power. And then we added a second inverter and ran it in parallel. And we have videos on all that install. Uh, we have a playlist with all our Victron power and lithium stuff. Uh, I'll leave it linked in the description below if you wanna kind of catch up on the build so far. But you know, we didn't wanna be limited to what we can and can't run. So we ran two inverters and we also got rid of all our 12 volt batteries. And we are only running our 24 volt to 12 volt Orion converters in parallel to run all our 12 volt systems. So we have all these batteries and now we have to replenish the juice. So you have three options. You have solar, you can use a generator or shore power. We wanna be able to replenish our batteries mostly by solar if we can and have to only use a generator if you know a need be situation. But it just all depends on the weather, how much stuff you're using. Like we can run both ACs, we can run the a hair dryer, a microwave, all at the same time with the parallel inverters that we have. We can use up to 6,000 watts at any given time, but we can only run up to 4,800 watts consistently. If you run over 4,800 watts, it'll start to eventually overload the inverters and then they'll shut down. But we can run 4,800 watts all day long. Well, as long as we have enough power coming into the batteries. So we started looking at our options for solar. And then what we decided on, because uh, the, the panel size and the configuration of our roof, uh, we went with the 250 watt rich solar panels. And I started playing around with how that was gonna fit on the roof because we still wanted to maintain one thing. We wanna be able to take care of our roof, get up there, inspect it, clean it off, uh, clean out our slide outs too when we, we travel. If there's anything on there, we like to go out there and blow pack, make sure nothing's on there. So we designed the system to fit as many of those 250 watt panels as we could on there and still be able to walk the roof and get to the slide outs to clean them off. So this that's the way we came up with the design. Yes, I could have got bigger panels and, well, another factor you have to do is how much you know weight you're putting on. How much cargo capacity do you have to you know add on? And this is the most we could really fit and still be able to do what we want. All right, so after we got the panels installed, we were in a very shaded spot. So we hardly, got a whole lot of sun, which is a double-edged sword because, you know, we, the AC didn't have to run as much because we were shaded and, but then we couldn't, if we wanted to run off a of solar to test it, we really couldn't because we weren't in the sun. So eventually, you know, we had some naughty neighbors and uh, that were kind of annoying. So we wound up having to move places. So we came to a new place and we get a a bit more sun up here. We still have a little bit of shading and we'll go into that a little bit more detail and how it's affecting our solar system and the kind of power that we're getting. All right, now we're gonna talk a little bit more about how we set up our array. We set up into a series of five and two parallel. 
that's uh we have all right now we're going to talk about how we designed our array you know series versus parallel the way that works is when you combine panels in series you you add the voltage together and when you combine them in parallel you add the amperage together and then if you have series parallel you would you add the max voltage once you have those then you add the, the parallel come together you add the amperage of both of those together so for example ours each panel is supposed to run about 22 volts and we have a you know a series of five so that's a, about 110 volts and then each panel runs uh, about 12 13 amps so each series of five is running at about 110 volts and only putting out about 12 13 amps which equals about a total of about 2500 watts because if you remember ohm's law volts times amps equals watts so real quick we're going to go over the differences between running in series versus running in parallel if you have a, you know a large section run in series that section is going to start collecting sun earlier in the morning and later in the afternoon but the only downside really of having that kind of setup is like in this situation where like if you you'll see on this uh, picture here we uh we have one side that has got no shade on it and we can get like full power on that side and then the other side is only going to get a partial amount of power if you think you're going to be in a shaded area much you may want to do a few more parallels and then in series and just kind of spread them around but we figured well, at least no matter what we're going to get we should get sun on either one side or the other so one one way or the other one of those 1250 watt arrays is going to should be getting a good amount of solar power but hopefully that kind of helps you guys out if you're still on the fence about how that works. All right, so now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty. What everybody's been wanting to find out is how much power are you actually getting from this 2500 watt uh, solar array? And uh, you might be a little surprised. Like I said, we are getting some shaded areas and we're going to kind of go over a timeline uh, throughout the day because it's not consistent throughout the day. I'll give you more details about this and hopefully uh, just follow along. All right, guys, so I've done run several tests. I basically, you know, I shut the breaker off and just ran it th throughout the day and just let pretty much batteries and solar run a whole RV. And I did this several times just to kind of get a feel for exactly how much power we're using and get a general usage we're going to get on a normal day. You know, cloud coverage, rain, stuff like that. Um, this is mostly sunny days. We're getting a a pretty good readout of exactly how much power uh, we're pulling in in a day. You know, eight or nine o'clock, we start pulling a, a little bit of uh, power, maybe like a, a hundred to, you know, 200 watts. Nine o'clock rolls around, it starts picking up to 10 o'clock and we start seeing five, 600 watts. And then uh, usually about 11, 11.30, we start seeing maybe like a thousand watts. And that's probably when the second array over here on the driver's side uh, that side gets the most amount of sun but over here on the passenger side we still have all this shading over here on this corner till almost mid-afternoon most of the power we're getting is from that side so when we start getting closer to like two o'clock we really start seeing more power because i think at that point that's when that shading goes away in that corner and it starts pulling down you know then of course you know it's later in the afternoon i think we would probably see a lot more power at like noon and maybe a little before that if we didn't have the shading on this corner over here because that's prime time the sun's right over top of us but of course because of the shading um we're seeing a little bit lower numbers like at about noon to two o'clock anywhere between a thousand and fifteen hundred watts that's pretty steady after two o'clock, like I said, once that shading goes away, then it starts to amp up. It's averaging between 17, 1800 watts. And every once in a while, it'll come up to 19. And the most we've ever seen it go up to was about 2000 watts. But you know, the, the, the kind of sad thing about it is uh, you only get about two hours of where we're at in this position of prime solar, basically, you know, where we're getting like 18. 1900 watts for maybe two hours out of the day and that's from about two o'clock till about four o'clock after four o'clock it starts coming back down again it does basically the reverse of 
what it was getting from noon to two. And it goes back down to about 1500 and then by five o'clock it's like a thousand and then after that it just starts dropping quickly. So that's kind of what we're, we're seeing throughout the day. Of course I probably put up a couple of charts here but uh, after we did three tests and that where I totaled the amount of solar that we were getting throughout those days and we were getting about 8.1 to 8.3 kilowatt hours of solar throughout that day. And that's basically equivalent to like one and a half of my batteries. And this heat, it's been pretty hot, especially in the afternoons. Both ACs are running sometimes. It'll be one, then the other, then both at the same time, then they both cut off, then another one running, and they just, it just fluctuates a lot. But when two ACs are running and like the TV's on, you're running at least 3,000 watts. That takes a lot of energy. And you know, we're not trying to fool anybody saying that we can run off grid in these conditions, running two ACs, running the washer and dryer, and replenish our batteries with 2,500 watts. We don't want to be able to put anybody under the impression that, you know, if you get this much, you're going to be able to run everything like we do in the system. Eventually, my batteries would run out bef before enough solar could come in. Maybe I could probably get a little bit more solar for a couple more hours a day if I had full sun. Then maybe another two or three, 3,000 watt hours a day if if we got sun earlier, I, who knows, but we're gonna find out and we'll share it with you guys. So the, what it comes down to is the max we've seen so far is a little over 2000 watts at peak time. And I've only seen that happen once. And that's one thing I like about the Victron systems is you can go back and look in the history and see what the max voltage was and the max wattage was that you were getting. Uh, it's a very handy tool. The more information you have, the better off you are to make decisions about what you need to upgrade or what you need to do next uh, or how you need to change your habits to fit whatever you're, you know, whatever you'll be able to pull in. So eventually, like when we go do boondocking and stuff like that, where we are going to need to run two ACs if we're doing it in the summer when it's hot and we're pulling more energy than the solars can replenish, we will have to run a generator and that's a whole another can of worms because our parallel system kind of makes things difficult. Even running on the power assist mode, trying to run on 15 amp or 30 amp breaker, just doing power assist, that's gonna be a whole nother video because, you know, I don't know if you guys have heard about, there's a thing with the Victron system where you can uh, select uh, uh, prioritize solar and wind power and it's called sustain. It doesn't work exactly the way people thinks it, think it does. That's gonna be a whole nother video. So you're gonna to have to subscribe, notification bell, all that fancy jazz. And uh, we'll tell you all about that. We've learned so much. We've had to actually get in contact with Victron themselves and find out exactly what the situation is because we went on the Facebook and the forums and stuff. We're getting all kinds of uh, mess, but we're gonna straighten it out and uh, tell you everything that, shared that we, everything that we found out. But hopefully this was helpful. If it was, you know, like I said, subscribe, notification bell, um, give this video a big thumbs up. We greatly appreciate it because we appreciate you guys and we appreciate your comments and positive feedback and all that stuff. So. We'll see you guys next week.